So now that we've hopefully determined the radius of curvature of the lens, we're going to use this equipment and that result to determine the refractive index of water. So what I'm going to do is take the lens in the flat, and I'm going to put the uh, flat just on the bit of paper there. Um, and this is some water, uh, which I found uh, in a ditch um, outside Fraser Noble. I'm going to try to steady hand this as much as I can. We'll see how well it goes. Um, you might be able to tell that the cardboard's all wrinkled from getting soaked in the past, so we'll, we'll definitely see how well this goes. Actually, that's not too bad. So surface tension will cause it to bead. Um, so you'll see it's, it's forming that kind of little um, meniscus uh, on top of the, the flat there. And I'm going to take the lens now. I was careful um, to note which side I put the lens down on, so we were going to get it right the first time. Otherwise, I'd have to faff about cleaning the lens. There we go. So I've just sat that on top. Now, um, there should be good uh, amounts of water between the lens and the flat, enough there uh, that it'll be water all through. Um, if not, it'll become clear on the image, um, but let's slide this back in place. And I'm just gonna look through and see if I can see a ring pattern. So the rings are present, uh, which is good, but I just need to finally adjust so that it's under the light again. So I'm just going to get that perfectly set up now. And now that I've got everything aligned again to my satisfaction, I'm going to put the um, microscope eyepiece back in place. So things have moved around just slightly. Um, which is why it's now in a slightly different location and the focus may have shifted just a bit So I am just going to also check the focus And a small adjustment and I've got an excellent ring pattern now We need to take measurements of this ring pattern and do the same experiment as we we did before I'm making a judgment call here. So if you were in the lab depending on time, I would have you uh, pick which method worked best. So I'd have you either do the traveling microscope method or the photography method. However, in this case, because it's a little more active, I'm going to use the photography method um, so that you um, have to take the readings uh, yourself for this part of the experiment. But as the lab manual kind of tries to make clear, but you can ask me about this in the practical if you're not sure, um, if you get the slope of the two lines and compare them, um, the ratio of them should be the refractive index of water. Um, so that's the, the ratio of the non-water result and the water result, whichever one you use. Um, so you can definitely try it against each and see what you get. And of course, we need to calibrate it again with another ruler photo. So I've put the ruler back in place. And with the camera, I've taken another photo. So. Again, just because things will have inevitably changed because the camera settings uh, reset when it turns off, which it unfortunately did um, between me taking the first set of photos and the second, um, you just have to make sure that you, you do a second calibration. So it may be the same. Um, it's certainly not changed hugely, uh, so it's, it's possible it stayed the same, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's quite a bit different. So just use the second ruler and the second, uh, sorry, the second ruler photo uh, to do a second calibration measurement, and you should be able to uh, get your result. Okay, very good.